Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Will Arnett, Lamar Morris, Melissa McCarthy, and music from Alec Benjamin with Cleo and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. a fun day at the office today. You know, we had a little of a work Thanksgiving dinner last night for the whole staff. We did karaoke in our parking lot out back. And I'll tell you, you really don't know a coworker until you've seen him sing a seven minute and 49 second Billy Joel song in its entirety in a parking space. And by the way, that coworker's name happens to be Patrick Friend. <laughs> Patrick, he drank a bottle of red and a bottle of white, and I think some tequila, too. Today, in case you didn't know, and I'm pretty sure you didn't, is National Stuffing Day. And why they have National Stuffing Day two days before Thanksgiving, I don't, it's like having National Jesus Day two days before Christmas, but <laughs> happy National Stuffing Day, Guillermo. Are you stuffed right now? A lot, Jimmy, yeah, you from are. last night. <laughs> you know, um, Campbell's, the soup, people released what they call their annual state of the sides report. And the most popular Thanksgiving side dish of 2023 is, thank you, mashed potatoes is number one, which I endorse. Up from second place. Down from first place last year is stuffing and dressing. And then there's macaroni and cheese, yams slash sweet potatoes, whichever the hell is which. And, um, <laughs> In fifth place, green bean casserole, which is nonsense. Even the people who like green bean casserole don't like green bean casserole. It's, ever heard anybody say pass the green bean casserole? It's never been said. I had an argument, though, in the office today. Some of the guys were like, I love green bean casserole. I said, no, you don't love What you like, what you love are those little cans of fried onions they dump on the... If you start getting the urge for green bean casserole, just open those and just shove them right in your mouth. Trust me. Do you like green bean casserole? No, I don't like it. Have you ever even had green bean casserole? No, I never had it. But it's kind of gray and... It's... You know, Guillermo's favorite side is, uh, the side of the table his mother-in-law isn't on. Thank you. Right? Yeah, right, Jimmy, yes. Is she coming over? Yes, of course. She is. Are you guys having chicken again for Thanksgiving this year? No, we're making tamales. Oh, no turkey at all? No, no turkey, yeah. We're making tamales. All right. You know, they say this could be one of the busiest weeks ever travel-wise. But gas prices are the lowest they've been in years. Gas is so cheap, some people are using it as gravy this year. The price of gas is now uh, back under $3 a gallon in 11 states, not our state. But, um, and I don't know about you, but I, for one, am excited to see all the Republicans who are attacking Biden when the gas prices were so high, now celebrating him for the low prices. I'm sure that will be very sweet. You know, it's Taylor Swift night on Dancing with the Stars, which means tonight... Millions of young Americans found out that Dancing with the Stars is still on television. <laughs> it's, it's like when you realize you never canceled that gym membership. You're like, oh, what is this? <laughs> Taylor herself was not on hand for Taylor Swift night, but last week she sent in a video message to make her considerable presence felt. Next week, we've got a celebration of Taylor Swift. Here's a special message. I can't wait to see Dancing with the Stars celebration of my eras next week. I wish I could be there with you guys, but I'm on tour in Brazil. I will be there in spirit, and I'll be watching. Oh, uh, we know you'll be watching, Taylor. Yeah, no, she won't. She's not. <laughs> Sorry, Alfonso, but I know it's hard to hear, but Taylor Swift just lied to you. She's not going to be <laughs> devoting two hours of her life to watching Ariana from Vanderpump Rules do the cha-cha. <laughs> She's busy and in love. And by the way, in Washington, our first lady, Dr. Jill Biden, welcomed the arrival of the official White House tree. The tree came by horse and carriage, which is just the message you want to send when you're trying to make everyone forget you're the oldest president in the history <laughs> of the United States. 
The Bidens have not yet revealed their official Christmas theme. They, every year they have a theme. Last year the theme was We the People, which was a welcome departure from the previous administration's theme, which was uh, MAGA Christmas in Hell. <laughs> Speaking of MAGA and hell, Marjorie Taylor Greene released a book today. Her first, it's the first book she's ever written or read, and she, it's called MTG. It's got a little bit of everything. It's got some revisionist history. It's got some conspiracy theories. It's got Jewish space lasers, and of course, Marge's famous recipe for gazpacho police in a peach tree dish. The book is getting a lot of negative reviews online, which I guess is what happens when you tell your supporters that reading makes them gay. But a PR person for her publishing company said few individuals have taken Congress by storm in the same way she has, which is true and especially impressive when you consider most of the people who did take Congress by storm are in federal custody right now. <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene, not a bright woman. She says very stupid things on a daily basis, but. Her her new idea might just be her dumbest yet. We need accountability. So I've called on Speaker Johnson to create a new January 6th Select Committee because we need to hold the old January 6th Committee accountable, Nancy Pelosi accountable. We need to subpoena the FBI, the Department of Justice, and anyone else who was involved in what I would call actually the real big lie. That's the big lie, is what happened on January 6th. Oh, so she wants to create a January 6th committee to investigate the January 6th committee <laughs> and do January 6th all over again. I guess it's brilliant. <laughs> Did she need to write a book? Couldn't we have given her some crayons and a Denny's placemat and, <laughs> and got that out of her system? <laughs> we are now um, Less than two months out from the Republican caucus in Iowa, which so far is a race for number two. Trump has a big lead, but he may very well be going to prison. And Nikki Haley's poll numbers are on the rise. In New Hampshire, Nikki Haley's polling in second place, despite making the mistake of doing some totally unscripted crowd work at a rally in the town of Hooksett. Hi, sweet girl. How are you? Good. I love your hat. Thank you. Thank you. One of your guys gave it to me for free. <laughs> I want you to tell me which guy that was, because we don't do things for free, although you look cute in it. <laughs> I don't see him right now. He's probably hiding. <laughs> <laughs> want to let that girl run for president. We don't do things for free should be the official Republican Party platform. But the rise of Nikki Haley is obviously on Trump's radar because he took a break from flushing his toilet or whatever to post a video lashing out at her today. Fox News gave up on Ron DeSanctimonious. He's turned out to be a disaster. Now they're pushing bird brain. You know who that is? Nikki Haley. <laughs> what a message. <laughs> bird brain, you know who that is? Nikki Haley. Good night. Strong words from a man whose hair looks exactly like a bird's nest. He was, um, Frodhorn Leghorn was shrieking up a storm today. He posted not one, but 19 videos of himself. Look at this, like the worst episode of Hollywood Squares of all time. <laughs> the Trump Media and Technology Group just filed a lawsuit against 20 news organizations for reporting that Truth Social, his platform, lost $73 million when they say they only lost $31.6 million. So now they're suing for $1.5 billion in damages, which getting sued for spreading misinformation by Truth Social is like getting sued for spreading Lyme disease by ticks. It's <laughs> ironic. But this latest lawsuit, it's part of Trump. Is, he's trying to break the Guinness World Record for most consecutive days spent in court, and he's getting there. Trump, law, Trump Lawsuits from Donald Trump are like um, Christmas cards from your real estate agent. They immediately get thrown out, and you never hear about them again. <laughs> And then we have the evil ex-Luthor, Elon Musk, who's suing a watchdog group called Media Matters for informing advertisers that ads they were buying on his site were popping up next to pro-Nazi content. Last week, Musk appeared to endorse an anti-Semitic post that claimed Jews hate white people and want to flood our country with minorities. He responded to the post by saying, you have said the actual truth. And of course, it's a lot of major companies, Disney, IBM, Apple announced they would pull their ads from X, why they were still running ads on X in the first place, I don't know, but now they're not. Now the only ads left on X are for Cheech and Chong edibles, but it's an especially big problem for a woman named Linda Yaccarino, who's the CEO of X, 
She came over from a big career in sales at NBC, and now she's overseeing a mess. Many of her colleagues are calling on her to step down, but she has decided to stay put at X. And I thought it might be interesting to check in with her to see how it's going and um, how uh, she's holding up. Linda, are you there? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't say that all Taiwanese people eat kittens. That would be crazy. Let me check. <laughs> Nope, he said all Taiwanese people eat kittens. Okay, thank you so Linda, much. Linda, Linda, uh, hi, it's Jimmy Kimmel. I just, is, I wanted to check in with you and see, is everything going okay over there? Because yeah. I've read a lot of stuff in the news. Everything's going great. I don't know what you're talking about. Everything's going great. Now, why are you drinking so much wine then? Because I already drank all the vodka. Oh. Yeah. Now, are you worried that, about the fact that major companies are pulling their advertising from your platform? Because your boss, Elon Musk thought it was a good idea to amplify an anti-Semitic message. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so interesting. What was your question again? I said, are you concerned that Elon's hateful posts are harming your business? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Wow, that's a good one. Um, I don't know. I guess it would depend on the shape of the hot well, dog. You know, see, now that is not at all what I asked. I was asking you if you're... Yeah. yeah. Ah! <laughs> Why are you screaming? That's how we say hello here. Oh. Um, excuse me, what? He said Hitler is a cool guy. No, 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 that can't be right. He wouldn't say that. He probably just meant that Hitler was chilly, right? Nope. I see it here. He said Hitler is a cool guy. Okay, that's great. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, see, now that's what I'm talking about. And people are wondering why you're defending Elon. Because you've had a very respectable career this, in television. This makes you look pretty bad. Did you just say I look pretty? I said this makes you look pretty bad, actually. <laughs> Listen, Elon is outspoken, mm -hmm. okay? But I can fix him, you know? I just have to shrink myself down and hide under a chef hat and kind of control everything he does. Yeah, yeah, that's the plot of Ratatouille, so I don't think that's... No, I don't think that's right. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? He said that Kanye made some good points. Okay, all right, yeah, I'll take care of it. Thank you so much. Okay, he said Kanye made some good points, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> That's not really good. Are you saying hello again now? No, I'm screaming for real, okay. Jimmy. Okay, all right, well, Linda, I just wanted to say good luck with everything, and we're all rooting for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy the cake. I think she ate some black. All right, well, it's Lindy Yaccarino. And one more thing before the holidays officially hit. Our friend Melissa McCarthy has a new holiday movie called Genie. It's on Peacock starting tomorrow. Melissa plays a genie who grants wishes as genies do. And we thought it might be fun to grant some wishes in real life. So we did some investigating. Uh, we got to the bottom of some real wishes held by some very deserving people, some teachers, volunteers, some kids from Children's Hospital. We found out what they wanted for Christmas. And we sent in a magical genie named Melissa to make their wishes come true. Let's test it, let's test it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I've never seen you. Come here. Come here. Christmas tree. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there. I'm AI Melissa Hi. McCarthy. What's up, what's up? Hello, and what is your name, small one? Messiah. And who's the giant next to you? I'm Boomer, big Boomer in the building. I know that possibly you are having trouble with a mode of transportation with two wheels. My bike is flat. Oh, just like many of the real Melissa McCarthy's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Elf Donnie, show him what we've got. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. A bike pump? What is this, 1957, <laughs> Donnie? Huh? Donnie, go sober up. Go on. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. Will you wait for me? Okay. <laughs> Oh. I mean, Donnie can't give you just a pump. Wow. Huh? What do you think? Claim your bike. Claim your bike. I got it. I got it. I got it. What is your name? Mason. What are some of your hobbies? Um, I act and I draw sometimes. What's your favorite actor or actress? Lin Manuel Miranda. Lin's okay. Try again. <laughs> you. Great answer. Listen, kid. Is there something in particular that you're really hoping you get for Christmas? Uh, Nintendo Switch OLED. Nintendo! That's with uh, Mario, am I right? Yep. I used to date him. 
a real freak. And his brother, I also dated him. I'm not gonna go into details. It wasn't natural. Are you in the mood for a gift? Yeah. I heard you love crackers. Right. Oh my God. How about that? Thank you so much. Bring it in. Oh my God. Thank you so much. I'm just very happy. I'm glad we asked This is a $5,000 gift certificate to Target. Can we use it to go get some Starbucks? Though? Maybe you should get an electric bike instead. No way. This is from my very favorite book in Dev Com. This is $15,000. How's that sound? Oh, I can keep it. If you don't want it, I'll just keep it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Melissa McCarthy, you watch Genie on Peacock. Starting tomorrow, we have a good show for you tonight. Lamorne Morris is here with us. We have music from Alex Benjamin, and we'll be right back with the one and only Will Arnett. So stick around. 